see what we're reading here. Too high. Yep, higher than it reads. Good enough. We'll be back in two minutes. All right, it's been two minutes. Grill's still as hot as we can get it. We're gonna flip them. Nice grill marks going on there. All right, we we'll go two more minutes. As you can see, we've already got these guys spiced up. It's nothing special in this case. It's just gonna be a little bit of chili powder and a little bit of cayenne because, well, you know, heat's great in chili. All right, back in two more minutes. All right, back again two minutes later. Again, got good grill marks showing up. We're gonna rotate them a little bit because, well, you know, fancy's great. So there we go. All right. Now, if I was going for medium rare, I would just go with uh, one minute and then one more minute on each side and be done with it for this this thickness of steak. But this is going to go into chili, and I don't really want a medium rare. I really want to go with about medium on this, so we're going to go closer to a minute and a half, two minutes again on each side. Um, we'll cut them open and see how they look in the end. Maybe it's perfect, maybe it isn't. All right, catch you in another minute and a half. All right, back again. Getting close to done here. All right, nice, perfect crosshatch. Even a blind squirrel finds an occasional acorn. All right, another minute and a half. Piece of cake, right? And we're back, we're done here. All right, let's pull these guys off of here. Again, nice, good grill marks on each side. Should be good to go. We're gonna take these off and let them rest for a little while. Came out fairly well. Okay, we're back inside. We're gonna take a look at the items that are going to go in the pot first. We're gonna start with the grilled sirloin that we just took off. And now we've got some ground chuck as well. Go with the 80-20 here. Fat's good, fat's flavor. Uh, next up we have some ground turkey. This is going to go into my wife's pot of chili. We're actually gonna end up making two pots while we're at this. It's not a whole lot more work to do two instead of just one, so go ahead and knock them both out. Uh, next up we've got some yellow onion. Go with the sweet onion, not something with too much bite. Uh, and we also have some bell peppers here, some red, yellow, and green. So we're good to go, right? Wow, with all that meat on the counter, I just about made a rookie mistake. Almost forgot the side beer. But not to worry, problem solved. That's better. So we've got all the meat out, might as well go ahead and get it in the pans. We're going to start with the ground chuck. As you'll notice, I subscribe to the hot pan, cold food approach, so we're going to get a bit of smoke. I've got the vent running fairly hard, so hopefully you can still see what's going on in here. You'll also notice here that I didn't use all of the ground chuck from that second tube. We'll save that for burgers or whatever. The reason I'm doing that is we've got the grilled sirloin that's going to make up the difference in, in total amount of meat. Also in goes the turkey here. Again, we're going to make two separate pots. I'm going to eat the beef. My wife is going to eat the turkey. Uh, next up, you're going to get some onions. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use all of these So um, because I'm making a half batch for my wife and a one and a half batch for me. We're going to end up with about uh, a one third, two third uh, ratio there between the two pots. I'm going to grab a spoon and start to break up this meat a little bit. Uh, also help distribute the onions a little bit better so that they're not all clumped up. And scrape the bottom of the pan a little bit just so that we don't end up uh, with anything too burnt on the bottom or anything sticking. So with the beef mixed up, at least partially, I'm going to go ahead and grab a second spoon uh, and start to get to work on the turkey. It's the same thing here, we're just breaking it up, scraping up the bottom, and mixing the onions around a little bit. You know, I didn't even notice that while I was actually cooking, uh, but... You know, such is life. Man down. 
All right, next up, the bell peppers. Uh, you're going to notice that I do not use all of these, unlike the onions uh, that we poured the whole bag in. But we're going to reserve a few of these for later in the process. What I like to do is, is I like to use, uh, I don't know, about half, maybe even two-thirds of these early in the process. Let them soften and cook down a little bit, a lot like the onions will. But uh, I like to hold a few of them back so that we can put in later in the process. That way it sort of gives them a little bit of crunch. They still retain some of that um, during the cooking process since they go in later. You know, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, I tend to like a little bit of different texture. So now I'm pouring in the serranos, and you'll notice those are diced up, almost minced, um, much more finely. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love heat. I, I love the spice, but I don't really want to bite into a huge bite of, of hot uh, chili peppers. That's not exactly what I want uh, in the chili. I want the heat to be distributed a little bit more evenly. you also notice I did not put nearly as much into the pot full of turkey. My wife's, again, not a huge fan of, uh, of overly spicy food, so I'll keep a few of those uh, held back for myself. Um, and again, just like the bell peppers, we retained a few of those for later in the cooking process. Uh, throughout the browning of this meat, um, they will lose a little bit of their heat, so I like to save a little bit of those for the end so that you can get a little bit of punch. We're just going to use this as an opportunity to break the meat up a little bit better and help uh, distribute those peppers that we just tossed in. Um, as you get more of these vegetables in here too, that also helps to sort of keep the meat separate and from clumping up as much, so it's really sort of a dual benefit in that case. And again, I am using separate spoons, but since everything's getting cooked and then even afterwards, they're gonna remain at a fairly high temperature even once everything is brown. Um, and I will use a separate spoon once we're done browning everything. I, the risk of contamination is, is pretty nil at that point. Now that I've got them mixed up, uh, at least partially well, we're going to toss a little bit more flavor in here. We're going to do a little bit of chili powder. That's going to go into both pots. This is not something you're going to necessarily find in the recipe, at least not any, uh, any quantity. Just to taste, um, I sort of dust the top of it and call it good. You can skip it if you want to. It's up to you. I'm also going to knock out some cayenne here. Uh, again, I, I like a little bit of heat in my chili. My wife, not as much, so I don't put any in hers. And we're going to go ahead and get at this with a spoon one more time. And while we're doing that, I, I will apologize for having to do so much of this in voiceover. Uh, it turned out I had a, a house full of people and there was a TV going on and the fan was really loud. So it was just easier to, to mute all of that and do it after the fact. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to let these sit, let them brown. Uh, we'll stir them occasionally, but we're going to use this uh, this cooking time as an opportunity to measure out uh, some of those spices. While that meat's browning, let's go ahead and measure out a few of the ingredients. So we've got chili powder here, a few tablespoons. I'll be honest with you, you can just measure it with your hand. You can see I'm loosely measuring out around a tablespoon each time. It's not perfect, it doesn't need to be. Next up, we're going to toss in a few bay leaves. And again, all the measurements are actually going to be down in the recipe in the description. So check that for the, the recipe. It'll also have it in there for the exact amount of meat that you're using. Next up, we have some salt. I use kosher salt. It's coarse. If you use normal table salt, you're going to want to cut the amount that you put into there. Um, with this being coarse, the same volume is actually less weight. Now we've got some black pepper. Again, don't overdo it on the black pepper. If you want heat, there are better ways to do it. It's not black pepper. Cayenne, serranos, those are gonna help you out in the heat department. Some allspice. This may be because I'm too close to Cincinnati and they use some weird spices in some of the chili around here, but I assure you it will not taste like Skyline if you know anything about that. Cumin, to me, this is what makes chili smell like chili. So take a big whiff of that. It's a shame you don't have smell-o-vision. Cayenne, this is completely to taste. Uh, so whatever amount that I have, feel free to increase or decrease based on your tolerance. A little bit of garlic powder as well. This is a thing that, again, I don't like to overdo. Don't get me wrong, I like garlic. But if I wanted Italian food and pasta sauce, I'd be making that instead. A little bit of Spanish paprika. 
you can mix in different types of paprika. Hungarian paprika is going to be a little bit spicier. Smoked paprika will certainly have a different flavor, but use whatever you like. A little bit of cocoa powder here, and so this is really not going to make it taste like chocolate, but it is going to round out the flavors a little bit, bring a little bit of earthiness into it. Uh, it definitely don't skip on that one. Now we're going to put in a little bit of brown sugar. I use dark brown sugar. If all you have is light brown sugar, that's fine. Again, this is going to be a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of depth of flavor to help round out the heat that you're going to get from the Serrano's as well as from the cayenne pepper. However, I assure you, this is not going to be sweet chili by any means. A little bit of nutmeg again. This is probably hearkening back to that Cincinnati style chili. Again, though, I assure you, this does not taste like pumpkin pie unlike Skyline does. And before I catch a bunch of flack from my fellow Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky natives, I love Skyline. I eat there a couple of times a month. That's just not what we're making here. All right, that's it for the dry ingredients. Uh, next up, we're gonna take a look at the wet ingredients. Not nearly as many of these. A little bit of lime juice. I'm gonna squeeze that out. Um, you can cheat and use the bottled stuff if that's easier, that's what you have around. I actually happen to have some fresh limes around. You caught me reading the recipe there. Next up we have some W sauce. Toss that in. We're also going to get a little bit of soy sauce in there. Use whatever brand you want. I'm just showing the label so you can see what I'm pouring in. Last up we have some hot sauce. This is another example where don't use more of this to make the chili spicy. If you want to do that again go back and use the cayenne or use more serrano peppers. If you put hot sauce in here and you put too much of it in there anyway you're going to end up with chili that just tastes like hot sauce. It's not going to be spicy it's just going to taste like whatever hot sauce you used. So there you have it. That pretty much does it for the ingredients that we're going to measure anyway. Now let's get back and check on that meat. So most of this is fairly brown now. It's, it's maybe a little hard to see on camera, but there's just a little bit of pink left in some of that ground beef. The turkey really at this point is pretty much all the way done. That's because there's a lot less of it in the pot. It's on a slightly larger burner because I was trying to get the larger pot under the camera and there's just really not that much fat in turkey. It, it tends to cook up pretty quickly. But with the meat almost finished, let's toss in that steak. And as you can see, we did manage to get it fairly nice it's it's pretty much right between medium rare and medium meaning that it spends a few more minutes in the pot like this and we're going to kick that sucker right over to the goal line to medium all right we'll give that a good stir mix that in the rest of the way and then we're pretty much ready to drain this and i do drain the meat i don't rinse it but i do take it put it into a colander and strain out uh, as much of that fat uh, that we've liquefied as possible once we've done that we'll come back and, and we'll do our final assembly Okay, now that we have our meat fully drained, it's time to start putting in the remaining ingredients. I'm going to start with some tomato juice. And in we go. We're also going to put in some corn. I use frozen corn. You could use canned corn if that's all you have. And some diced tomatoes with green chilies. Rotel's the brand everybody knows about, but you can use anything you find. The one thing with the Rotel is it comes in a smaller can than most of the other brands. So the recipe is going to call for that larger. I believe it's 14 and a half ounces. The Rotel is smaller. It's, it's 10 or 10 and change. So just keep that in mind when you're shopping. And then go the rest of the bell peppers, as you recall, we held some of these over so that we could get a little bit of crunch in here. As part of that, we'll also toss in the serranos. Here's all of the wet and dry ingredients that we measured out earlier, bay leaves included. All of that's going to go in. And if this were my pot, I'd be done since I don't eat beans in my chili. So the only thing left for mine would be to just stir this up, let it simmer for 30 minutes or longer so all those flavors can sort of meld together. And then you'd be finished. 
Of course, chili's always better the next day after it's set in the fridge overnight, but let's face it, you're not going to wait that long. For those of you who do like beans in your chili, here we go. We've got a combination of black beans as well as kidney beans, and they've been rinsed. That's it. Just toss them in, mix them up, you're good to go. And here we have it, the final ready-to-eat product. So, thanks for watching. Stop drooling all over the keyboard and go out and make it.